RCS, or Rich Communication Services, combines the simplicity of SMS with the advanced functionality of apps like WhatsApp. With RCS, you can send simple text messages or fancier things like the carousel you're seeing on screen right now. If you're already familiar with Twilio's messaging API, you'll be happy to know that a lot of your skills transfer directly over to programming for RCS. Let's see what it takes to send your first RCS message using Node.js. Starting in the Twilio console, I'm going to head to Explore Products and scroll down to RCS. Now, if you don't see RCS, head over to this form and request access for RCS messaging to get started today. Back in the console, I'll click RCS and then click Create New Sender. Here we need to give a sender display name. This is the name that's going to show up when the recipient taps on your profile. So give it your brand's name. I'm just going to call this My First RCS Sender Node and click Continue. After a few seconds, we'll be in the Create Sender UI. Here's where we're setting up our profile for our RCS sender. We've already given it a display name, which you can see over on the right, and now we're specifying a description for our business. Next, we can specify a border color that will be used for buttons and highlights. Then we need to specify a logo and a banner image. You can see the dimensions here. These need to be JPEGs or PNGs, and you need to provide a URL to these images. Here we're providing a logo and a banner that gives this a nice Twilio devs feel. Next in the contact details, we need to specify either phone number or email addresses. Here I'm showing how to specify a phone number for a support contact. And you can add more if you'd like. Then you need to specify a privacy policy and a terms of service. I'm just going to give a couple of example URLs. If you were doing this for real, you'd want to give the actual privacy policy in terms of service. Once we're done with that, check out the preview and click Next. Now it's time to test our sender, and we're going to do this by specifying a test device. I'm going to use my phone, which is RCS compatible for this test, and you should do the same with a phone that you have that has RCS capabilities. We'll click the Add Device to Test This Sender button and specify that phone number. Again, it needs to support RCS. Now once I click Invite, this is going to send an invitation message over to my phone that I need to accept. Here you can see it popping up on my phone, and I will accept the invite to be a tester. Now the correct flow here is to check off that checkbox that says that you've accepted the tester invite as soon as you receive that. I didn't do that, and you're going to see what happens here in a second. Now let's type out a message to send to our test device. I'll just say this is a test message from the RCS Sandbox. I'll go to click that send test message and you'll see we get that error for the acknowledgement required because I didn't hit that checkbox. Let's hit the checkbox and I'll come down and hit the send test message button again and you'll see the message pops up successfully on my phone and we're good to go. I'll click next in the create sender UI and that's going to take us to the compliance page. Now if you were ready to launch this sender, you would need to complete the carrier compliance stuff that is presented here. That's outside of the scope of this video, but Feel free to read the docs at this link to learn more. Now we're going to hit save as draft and close and we're done with our RCS sender. Now RCS uses messaging services so that we can fall back to SMS in the event that RCS can't be sent to a device. So I'll head to messaging and services and create a new messaging service. I'll name this messaging service by RCS service. How creative. I'll take the default use case of notify my users and click next. Now we need to add a sender. We're going to add that RCS sender that we just created. Click continue and pick the RCS sender out of the list. Ours is that my first RCS sender node. Click the checkbox and then click add RCS senders. A sender pool that includes RCS also needs an SMS enabled number for fallback in case RCS doesn't work. So click add senders and this time we're going to add a phone number. Click continue and click the checkbox next to any phone number in your account that's currently unassigned or buy a new one if necessary and click add phone numbers. Step number three of this setup process is where we would set up what happens on an incoming message. We're not going to do anything fancy here in this tutorial, so I'm just going to pick receive the message and do nothing with it. This means it'll be available in the API and in the logs, but we won't really process it in this video. We'll head down and click the add compliance info button now the A2P 10 DLC information here is outside of the scope for this video, but I encourage you to watch our A2P 10 DLC video that I linked in the description to learn more. We'll click the skip setup button to finish creating our RCS service, and it's time to head over to the terminal to create our node project.
Over in the terminal or command prompt, I will create a new directory called rcs-node and inside of it, I will create a new npm project. Next, I'll use npm to install the Twilio node helper library. It's time to head into a code editor. I'm going to use VS Code, but feel free to use cursor or whatever you want. I'll create a new file here and I'll call it sendrcs.js. The first thing we need to do in this file is create a Twilio REST client. So we'll say const client equals require Twilio. Now here you would need to pass in your account SID and auth token. These are the two pieces of credentials you can get in the Twilio console that allow you to access the Twilio API. This is what that might look like if you specified them manually and put those values in there. But here's a pro tip. If you have these stored in environment variables with the correct names, you don't need to pass them in at all. Next, we'll create a message by calling client.messages.create. The first parameter we'll specify for this call is a body. This is the text that will be sent in this message and we'll set it to this RCS message contains an image. The next parameter we'll specify is a two phone number. Now that's going to be my personal phone number. And rather than show that to you, I'm going to use an environment variable to specify this phone number. Next is where we'll specify where we want the message to come from. Now, if you've used a from phone number in the past here, you would specify a phone number. In our case, we're going to use the messaging service that we set up for our RCS sender. To do so, we need the messaging service SID for that that we created earlier. So I'll copy that out of the console and take it back over to the code and paste it in. Now we need to provide some truth to this claim in the body that this RCS message contains an image. And to do so, we'll specify a media URL to an image that will be sent with this message. Once the message is sent successfully, we'll log out the message ID so that we know that it was successful and so that we have an ID to look up in the logs in case something goes wrong. And speaking of things going wrong, let's just make sure we catch and log out any errors that might happen when we attempt to send this message. All right, let's test this thing. I'll open up the terminal and I'll run node send rcs.js and there's our message ID. And if we look on my phone, there's the message. We've been successful in sending our first RCS message using Node.js. Quick shout out to Marius who wrote the blog post that inspired this video. Please check out the blog post from the link in the description and let us know in the comments what you'd like to see next on the channel.